Welcome back to recitation. In this video, I'd like us to consider the following problem. The first part is I'd like to know for what values of b is this vector field f conservative? And f is defined as yi plus the quantity x plus byzj plus the quantity y squared plus 1k. So as you can see, the only thing we're allowed to manipulate in this problem is b. b will be some real number. And I want to know what real numbers are allowed or what real numbers can I put in for b so that this vector field is conservative? The second part of this problem is for each b value you determined from 1, find a potential function. So fix the b value for one of the ones that's acceptable based on number 1, and then find a potential function. And then the third part says that, that you should explain why f dot dr is exact. And this is obviously for the b values determined from 1. So the second and third part are once you know the b values. And you're only going to use those b values that make f conservative, because that's the place where we can talk about finding a potential function. And that's where we can talk about f dot dr being exact, are exactly those values. OK, so why don't you pause the video, work on these three problems, and then when you're feeling good about them, uh, bring the video back up. I'll show you what I did. OK, welcome back. Again, we're interested in doing three things with this vector field. The first thing we want to do is to find the values of b that make this vector field conservative. So I will start with that part. And as we know from the lecture, the thing I ultimately need to do is I need to find the curl of f. OK, so the curl of f is going to measure how far f is from being conservative. So if the curl of f is 0, I'm going to have f being conservative. So that's really what I'm, what I'm interested in doing first. So I'm actually just going to rewrite uh, what it means, what the curl of f actually is. So I'm going to let f, I'm going to denote it in our usual way by pqr. And in this case, that's specifically y comma x plus byz comma y squared plus 1. OK, that's my pqr. So p is y, q is x plus byz, and r is y squared plus 1. And now the curl of f, which was, which was uh, found in the lecture, so I'm not going to show you again how to find it. I'm just going to write the formula for it. It's exactly the following vector. It's the derivative of the rth component with respect to y minus the qth component with respect to z. That's the i value. The j value is p sub z minus r sub x j. The kth value is q sub x minus p sub y. Okay. Okay, so there are three components here. And let's just start figuring out what these values are, and then we'll see what we what kind of restrictions we have on b. So let's start doing this. So again, this is p, this is q, and this is r. So r sub y is the derivative of this component with respect to y. That's just 2y. Q sub z is the derivative of this with respect to z. Well, this is 0, and this is by. OK, let's look at the rest first. P sub z, derivative of this with respect to z is 0. Derivative of r with respect to x, this is the r component. With respect to x, that's 0. So that doesn't have any b's in it at all. And then q sub x minus p sub y. q is the middle one, q sub x is 1. P sub y is the first one, p is the first one, p sub y is 1. OK, so what do we get here? Should have written equals there, maybe. OK, so the jth component is 0, and the kth component is 0. So all I'm left with is 2y minus by i. And if I want f to be conservative, this quantity has to be 0. So I see there's only one b value that's going to work, and that is b is equal to 2. OK, so I know. Part one, the answer to the question is just for b equals 2 is f conservative. That was maybe poorly phrased. f is conservative only when b is 2. Okay, And that's because the curl of f is 0 only when b is 2. All right, so now we can move on to the second part. And the second part is for this particular value of b, find a potential function. 
And our strategy for that is going to be one of the methods from lecture. And it's going to be the method from lecture that in three dimensions is much easier than, than the other. So the one method in lecture that's easy in three dimensions is where you start at the origin and you integrate f dot dr along a curve that's made up of line segments. So this strategy I've done before in, in two dimensions in one of the problems in recitation. Now we'll see it in three dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate along a certain curve, f dot dr. And this curve is going to go from the origin to x1, y1, z1. And that will give us f of x, oops, almost wrote z1, f of x1, y1, z1. OK, so this is the sort of general strategy. And now we'll talk about it specifically. This will actually be f of x1, y1, z1 plus a constant. But we'll deal with that part right at the end. OK, so c in this case is going to be made up of three curves. And I'm going to draw them in a picture. And then we're going to describe them. So I'm going to start at 0, 0, 0. My first curve will go out to x1, comma, 0, 0. And that's going to be the curve c1. Oops, I want that to go the other way. That way. OK, C1 is going to go from the origin to x1, comma, 0, 0. So the, the y and z values are going to be 0 and 0 all the way along, and the x value is going to change. My next one, I'm going to make it long so I can have enough room to write. That's going to be my C2. And that's going to be x1, comma, y1, comma, 0. So in the end, what I've done is I've taken my x value, I've kept it fixed all the way along here, but I'm varying the y value out to y1. And then the last one is going to go straight up. Whoa, right there. It's going to go straight up. And so it's going to be with the x value and y value fixed. And at the end, I will be at x1, y1, z1. And this is c3. So those are my three curves. And this one, I'm going to move in this direction. Those are my three curves. And I want to point out that in order to understand how to simplify this problem, I'm going to have to remind myself what f dot dr is. OK, so f dot dr, if you remember, is p dx plus q dy plus r dz. Right? That's what f dot dr is. And so what I'm interested in, I'm going to integrate each of these things along c1, c2, c3. But let's notice what happens along certain, certain numbers of these curves. On C1, if we come back over here, on C1, y is fixed and z is fixed. So dy and dz are both 0. So on C1, I only have to integrate p. OK, so I'm going to keep track of that. On C1, which C1 is parameterized by x, 0 to x, I only need to t worry about the p. p of x, 0, 0, dx. This is my C1 component. And there's nothing else there, because these two are both 0. All right, now let's consider what happens on C2. On C2, if I look here, on C2, the x value is fixed and the z value is fixed. x is fixed at x1, and z is fixed at 0. And so dx and dz are both 0, because x and z are not changing. So there's only a dy component. So the, the, on C2, which is parameterized in y, from 0 to y1, I'm only interested in q at x1, comma y, comma 0, dy. OK, so again, this component is 0 on c2 because dx is 0. And this component is 0 on c2 because dz is 0. And this component, I'm evaluating it. X1 is, x is fixed at x1, z is fixed at 0, and the y is varying from 0 to y1. And then there's one more component. And I'm going to write it below, and then we'll do the rest over here. And the third component is the C3 component. Now, not surprisingly, if I come back over here, because x and y are fixed all along the C3 component, the only thing that's changing is z. So dx and dy are 0. So I'm only worried about the dz part. OK, so again, as happened before, before I only had p in the first one and q in the second one, when now I have r only in the third one. And it's parameterized in z from 0 to z1. That's what z varies over. And it's going to be r at x1, comma, y1, comma, z, dz. Because the x's are fixed at x1, the y is fixed at y1, but z is varying from 0 to z1. All right, so I have these three parts. And now I just have to fill them in with the vector field that I have. 
I want to find what P is at x0, 0, what Q is at x1, y1, 0, and what R is at x1, y1, z, and then integrate. So I have sort of two steps left. One is plugging in, and one is evaluating. So let me remind us what P, Q, and R actually are, and then we'll see what we get. So P is actually Y. Let me write it again, maybe here. P, Q, R was equal to Y comma X plus 2YZ. I'll put it here so you don't have to look and I don't have to look. And then Y squared plus 1. OK? So P at X comma 0 comma 0, well, if I plug in 0 for Y, P is 0. So P at x0, 0 is equal to 0. So I get nothing to integrate in the first part. That's nice. OK? Now what is Q at x1, comma y, comma 0? Well, that would be an x1 here. 0 for y makes this term go away. So it's just equal to x1, right? And then R at x1, comma y1, comma z is y1 squared plus 1. So now I'm going to substitute these in to what I'm integrating. So the first one, there's nothing there. The q, let me just write it right here. The q is going to be the integral from 0 to y1 of x1 dy. And the r part is going to be the integral from 0 to z1 of y1 squared plus 1 dz. OK, so the p part was disappeared. This is the q part evaluated where I need it, needed it to be evaluated. It's just x1 dy. And the r part evaluated at x1, y1, z is just y1 squared plus 1. And so that's, I integrate that in z. So if I integrate this in y, all I get is x1, y evaluated 0 and y1. So here I just get an x1, y1, right? And then here, if I integrate this in z, I just get a z. And so I evaluate that at z1 and 0. I just get z1 times y1 squared plus 1. OK, so this is actually my potential function. And so let me write it formally. I should actually say this is my final answer, right? This was the, I was integrating. This is actually what I get. And so what I was trying to find, if you remember, I'm going to come back here and just mention again. What I was doing was I was integrating along a curve, f dot dr, to give me f of x1, y1, z1, right? So now I found it. The only thing I said is we also have to allow for there to be a constant. OK, so the, the potential function is actually exactly this function plus a constant. OK, so this is f of x1, y1, z1. And since I don't have much room above, I'll just write below. This is f of x1, y1, z1. So that's my potential function okay, for this vector field, capital F, when it is conservative, so when b is equal to 2. OK, and there was one last part to this question. right? So if we come all the way back over, we're reminded of there was one last part. It was explain why f dot dr is exact for the b values determined from number 1. And the reason is exactly because of the following thing. f is conservative based on the fact that b is 2. And so we t when we talk about when f dot dr is exact, all we need to know is that, or the simplest case is f is conservative capital F is conservative, and I'm on a simply connected domain. Okay, And if you notice, capital F is defined for all values x, y, z, and it's differentiable for all values of x, y, z. So F is defined and differentiable everywhere on R3. R3 is simply connected. So we have a conservative vector field on a simply connected region, and that's what it means. That's one way we have of knowing F dot dr is exact. And so that actually answers the third part of the question. So again, let me just remind you what we did. We started with a vector field f. We found values for b that made that vector field conservative. And then we used one of the techniques in class to find a potential function for that value of b. So there were a number of steps involved. But ultimately, again, it's the same type of problem you've seen before when f was a vector field in two dimensions. So it shouldn't be feeling too different. Uh, from some of the stuff you saw earlier. Okay, I think that's where I'll stop.